Uh, welcome to the Wednesday, March 14th, 2018 meeting with CPC. We're finally back together after two cancellations, is that right? I think the Northampton schools closed for the seventh time yesterday. So that brings them into close to July for kids and staff and teachers. Um, as always, we begin with general public comment. We have a couple of folks from Historic, but is there any, any general public comment? No. Approval of minutes? Do we have minutes? Uh, I did them, but I would like to do some minutes. So. Uh -huh. All right. Well, there goes that one. Um, moving on to the chair's report. So just a few things, and the main uh, item is that Ann Brooks. Our planning board representative has uh, resigned uh, from the committee. She's moving out of town. Um, she came here with her to be near her grandchildren. Her, in and they have since moved, so what has held her here is no longer. Um, so um, we wish her well and mourn her loss. And what's the process, Sarah, to get a new planning person on? It probably won't happen until the fall, okay. uh, because by the time someone goes through the process to be appointed, it would be mostly all the way through the county. Okay. So we'll be one person shy, and we'll, we'll miss her. Uh, the second thing is, and I believe Sarah gave a copy of this to you, uh, the mayor received, uh, and I did as well, a um, letter from Lisa Clausen. Uh, and uh, one of the Carpenters Union locals expressing her discouragement and displeasure as to how, how we uh, went about the wage theft issue. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a long letter. Uh, you need to read it now. Um, but uh, she's, she is upset with our decision to do what we did and, and not to do the extent that, that, um, that, she, <coughs> that she and the coverage you asked for. Yeah. Hi. Um, I break this at either you and or Sarah. Um, do we know if the mayor has responded? Uh, if he has, I haven't seen it before. Thanks. Uh, let's see. I thought maybe Lisa would be here this evening to uh, sort of talk us or express how she felt about this, but, uh, but she is not. Uh, let's see, the other thing is on the 24th, which is a Saturday coming up, uh, the First Churches is going to have um, a uh, event to celebrate the reinstallation of the two windows that we hope to fund. So that's 11 o'clock on Saturday, March the 24th. Uh, at the First Church reception to follow. Um, unfortunately, it's also the, uh, at noon is the gun violence uh, march, so I imagine that will take some people away from that. But in any event, Saturday, March 24th at 11 to celebrate the installation of those, of those two windows. What was the other event we were invited to, Sarah? Uh, wasn't there a, a open house? Or at the SRO. Uh, Event yeah. at yeah. Yes. Right. And when is that? Oh, that's our event tomorrow night. There's another one tomorrow night, night, but there was a the opening of the exhibit was last last Friday. Friday. And uh, Thursday. Friday. Right. And tomorrow night at seven o'clock to eight thirty is the um, a talk by the the SRO person. Seven. Uh, seven seven o'clock. Did I say seven thirty? I'm sorry, seven o'clock. And the photos really are remarkable. And, and boy, that building's gone up quick. And uh, talking about occupying the end of April, is that right? Wow. Not occupying, but having it done. It's been starting to move people back in. So that's pretty impressive to move so quickly. Uh, that's it for the chair's report. So we. I had one thing to it. Oh, please. Uh, so the, the SJC heard the Acton case. And they remanded it back to the Superior Court. It's 
sounded like the Superior Court didn't <coughs> look at all of the things that they probably should have to make sure that Anthem didn't violate the Anti-Aid Amendment. So it's not a decision about funding of religious institutions, it's just how we look at them. Uh, so we'll see what the, what the Superior Court does with the case now, but it's probably just making sure that these types of projects pass all of the applicable tests. Good, thank you, sir. Okay, we were to have, um, to hear from three applicants this evening for our three full proposals, the Academy, the Northampton Historic Commission on their plan, and the Northampton School Commission on the Cemetery Stone Restoration. Uh, however, uh, Deborah, who has presented to us before, has the flu, so in terms of the Academy of Music, she will be coming next week when we meet uh, before the public comments to present um, the theater restoration phase two for the Academy. Uh, so we have two um, presentations, and let's go with them in order of our agenda. The first is historic preservation plan. Okay, well, we're doing both of those. You're doing both. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Um, and, and well, actually, it, would you mind if I switch them? Because I know there are two people here to comment on the on the um, cemetery. No, that's plan. fine. However, we're going to that way, I works. won't I won't keep them. Yeah. So uh, just before she starts, I need to re recuse myself from this, um, and because uh, of uh, I guess potential future involvement. In the project. Okay. Um, so should I leave the room? No. Yeah. I, we don't. We don't have to just have her. Just, no. just don't. Just say a word. Just stay on one foot. <laughs> <laughs> Even though. Well, I, 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 okay. Okay. Um, so I'm Barbara Blumenthal, and I'm a member of the Northampton Historical Commission. And the first project you're going to talk about. It's one of two that have really resulted um, c coming from the applications coming from the Historical Commission because we're really um, striving to become a more proactive commission, not just reacting to threatened historic resources. Um, and uh, so this is one of the projects that we agreed last year to become more involved with. Um, the, and this is the application for preserving what are called the priority one gravestones is just part of what is a huge number of priorities and needs for three cemeteries um, in the city, Bridge Street, West Farms, and um, Park Street. So I'll give you a little background. And um, I think even well before 2014, um, people were concerned by the chain link fence around the Bridge Street Cemetery in particular, and um, the condition of some of the gravestones and, and the landscape itself. But in 2014, there was a request from the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association, and a study was conducted in large part because of funds from the CPC. Um, and, the, um, um, and, and Martha Lyon was one of the consultants for the Bridge Street Cemetery master plan. And the DPW then conducted and, and created master plans for the two other cemeteries, Park Street in Florence and then West Farms Road um, out near Mineral Hills. And the, um, the planning for this involved many months of uh, research, collecting ideas, public forums, and then the eventual creation of that master plan. And um, these were all done by, by about a year ago, and now we're into the trying to break down the components that were identified as really being needed for these three cemeteries. I, I, I think the um, total estimate for the cost for doing everything, if, if everything were done for all of these cemeteries, was about one and three quarters million dollars. And we're coming with the first project of the, again, these priority one stones, which is estimated will cost about $100,000, because it does require professional um, uh, preserva preservation and conservation. And just to give you a little, whoops, 
go back, uh oh, go back. And cemeteries, um, we want to, I want to give you a little background on these. And the Bridge Street Cemetery, you may all know, is the oldest one of the three, and it was established really less than 10 years after Northampton was founded. And it's, um, it's also still used. There are some plots that are still um, available, although most of it is, is historic burials. And the West Farm Cemetery, established in the late 18th century, on the westernmost part of the city, is also, of course, very important. And the Park Street Cemetery is the last, the most recent one. And it's in, very important in part because of the presence of burials of abolitionists and Underground Railroad members. Um, The grave markers obviously are very important. I, I'm also on a, on a memorial committee for the Northampton State Hospital. And unfortunately, burials at the former hospital are unmarked. So it's very important to preserve markers. Um, they're important to the individuals and those families, but also just to the history of the, of the, of the community. There's also their, their, their artwork, and they're irreplaceable. So I was referring to the planning process before. It was led by the DPW, and there were members of the Histor Historical Commission, neighborhoods, interest, and other interested people who were on these committees to brainstorm and come up with ideas for what could be done. And Martha Lyon, as I said, was one of the professional consultants. And the other was um, the Monument, Monument Conservation Collaborative which is based in Colbert, Connecticut. And they're necessary because there are techniques which are, um, and standards from the Depart both the Department of the Interior, um, mainly from the Department of the Interior, um, for pr how to preserve these, these stones. Barbara, what's that lower left picture? <laughs> you said Martha can't answer any questions, sorry. Um, and I'm not absolutely certain um, these photos were from Martha, and I apologize that I didn't identify all of them, but it's presumably one of the larger tombs that I'm going to say it may be the, but it may be the, I don't know if it's the right tomb or the, the Bates, no, it's the Bates tomb in Bridge Street Cemetery. So, as you can see, there was a list of 13 recommendations from this master plan. And the second one there of conserving what are called the priority one stones, which are the ones in most danger of literally disappearing. They're broken, they're in very um, unstable condition. And this was one of the priorities that was identified by both public comment and the professional consultants. Um, but you, but the, the, um, the whole plan um, will restore both the physical gravestones, the paths, streets, um, will also the hope is to install interpretive signs, create better public access, improve the perimeters, fencing of these cemeteries, and all of this while trying to be very, um, uh, very sensitive, very um, what's the word? sensitive to the to the needs of the neighbors also, because these are public spaces, but there are people who closely abut them, and uh, this needs to get their input and almost be coordinated with them to, to, to figure out what to do. And you can see what some of the other ones were, the restoration of that Bates tomb and upgrading various streets. In West Farm Cemetery, there were fewer needs. It's a much smaller <coughs> cemetery. But again, conserving the priority one stones rose to the top as the first project to break off from these larger number of um, larger number of needs. And again, with Park Street, there were a number of them. And a lot of them involved replanting. In, in the Park Street and, and West Farms, there was also a, a replacement of a flagpole was, was identified as a priority. And just really identifying these places and then describing the, the long history of them to people who might visit them. So the priority one gravestones are considered in the 
um, I consider them really endangered. Um, and there are 85 stones at Bridge Street, 17 at West Farms, and 44 at Park Street Cemetery. And that's what this application concerns, the, tr the conservation of these. But the conservation will also, I could go back so you could, well, that wasn't a very pretty slide, let's see. You'll look at a, a stone, you'll see one that's in danger, presumably, of falling, of falling over. So this request, which would involve these professional conservators, would include before and after pictures, assessment of what is actually needed. And as I said before, the um, work done would comply with um, a code of ethics and standards and practice and the US Secretary of Interior standards. Let me read this, for treatment of historic properties. And all work by this, uh, by the Monument Conservation Collaborative is generally done on site. Um, and it's actually, I mean, I don't, I shouldn't interject in what these plans call for, but to me it seems like a really good opportunity for public involvement, at least for public observation of how this is done. So I'm hoping there might be, maybe we can get together with historic Northampton and try and have a, like just as we've done with archeological digs, have um, some public um, observation of what's being done. And the total budget for this project is $100,000, but um, the Historical Commission is also gonna be applying to Mass Historic to their Preservation Projects Fund for a grant of $50,000, half the cost, half the estimated cost, but we won't know until spring whether or not we'll get that grant. If we do get it, then we could return half money or you know, not draw on half the funds that we're requesting, but at this point we need to request the full $100,000 from, um, from, uh, from as a CPA grant. So that's all I have to say on this one. I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions for Barbara? Is this the priority list? Like is, this, is number one the most important and number eight the least important, or is this just a list? I think it's a general priority list, because as you can see, the priority one stones it's not the weren't one. the first one, but it was right. just identified as a, as a, um, <coughs> a, a, you know, a finite project, doable project, that, and also the, fe the, the per perimeter fences are also really important to a lot of the people mm -hmm. who um, came to these uh, forums, but the stones are in danger if they're not conserved right now, of either disappearing or um, really becoming much more damaged. Um, so this whereas, is not necessarily your So it's not necessarily the order. The no, it's just okay. things will be identified as the plans are developed for each key part. Okay. Is there work going on on some of these other pieces? Because I did notice that Park Street, for instance, has the fence dumped down. Uh -huh. That's been taken out. Oh, okay, that I don't. That I don't know about, actually. Can, can you talk can't about the um, in the budget? There's a, a, a figure for inflation since the estimate, and mm -hmm. it seems like it's a fairly large figure for inflation. Uh, I'm trying to figure out when the estimate was done, and I'm, I'm guessing it was done on these inspection dates of 2015. So um, it, it, the hundred thousand is it, these are. How accurate is the hundred thousand with this four thousand three hundred and twenty inflation value that came from? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it was indexed against to come up with that value. Right. And to be honest, I'm not sure what it was indexed against either. So I, I can't claim to know that. But um, I think because the total is a hundred thousand dollars, as you said, including as the application says, including for inflation, we're hoping that this will cover it. I mean, we're not. Mm -hmm. We're not, um, you know, inflating it more than we need to. That would to, be a pretty cover cool costs. escalation number that, a, that an estimator would. This is two years old. This estimate, you said. It, I, I was yeah, trying to figure out how old it was. The best I could do was the condition assessment says 2015 on that one. Right. Depending on the type of work, people will include three, four percent escalation per year. But I mean, this is a very specialized trade, so it's hard to tell. Right. They don't need on healthcare. <laughs> Don't bet on contract prices going down. So. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yes. Uh, is there any of this work that could be done by volunteers under appropriate supervision, or is it really too technical and complicated for that? 
Um, it's my understanding, I don't know if this is what the um, committees and who've been planning this are thinking, but it seems as if some of it might be maybe some of the really, well, what's called the gross cleaning mm -hmm. might be done under supervision. But I think most of it really, it requires a conservator. It really does. And if we were able to fund less than all of it, is there a, a preference list amongst the three cemeteries? Hmm. So I was, um, not that I'm aware of, but obviously if that came to that, would we, there cemetery? would be, there would have to be, and it may be that, that it wouldn't just be one cemetery, there might still be work in all three cemeteries, but just a more of a triage identifying the most um, endangered stones in each one of those. And finally, do you have a, uh, any sense of how competitive those the grants are, as in how likely is it that you might get to 50,000? I don't. I'm sorry. Has that proposal been submitted already for um, the grant? I think actually Sarah would know Next that. Well, it's and yeah, it's not due they're to, that's why we don't know. Yeah, they're typically very things. competitive, but yeah. it depends on who else is out there applying for things. So it's a fairly small pot of money. When in the spring uh, late, late spring? Not until after the funding. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what are your thoughts about the bidding process? I hate to just say this to you, but I don't know <laughs> what that was. I, I mean, I, I will, I am representing the historical bid? commission, but I was not involved in the, the one. The reasons that Martha has is recusing herself is that she was very involved, obviously, in the master plans and sure. in getting those bids. And I was not, and I've taken this over to the I'm sorry. Oh, the sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about bids for work. No, yeah, yeah. the RFP. We can't submit an RFP until we know we have funding. So I'm sorry. I thought you were talking. You're going to go through the bid, that's standard city. Absolutely. Process. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm just like your question. And there's not a lot of companies who do this type of work. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so the estimate is probably fairly accurate. Assuming. Right. Barbara, Chris, Alden, thanks, thanks for coming. Um, I, some of my colleagues have been getting at, the, the, at this in different ways, but the, according to our tally, and it may have gone down since then, but we have just over $129,000 for this round for everything. Mm -hmm. um, and the two grants that you're going to be speaking on exceed that total. Correct. So even if we wanted to do everything you wanted to do, we mm -hmm. probably couldn't do it. Um, so we're looking for other ways to help you in a meaningful way that are going to move things forward that don't take quite quite a bite. So um, I understand that you may not, you know, have a way to approach that at this particular moment, but it's going to be helpful to us as we move forward in the decision-making process to figure out what is a viable alternative. Mm -hmm. um, because I, 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 I suspect that that's the best way to be able to do is some, some other number right. than the full amount. So right. just so. Well, as I said, I think whatever number you find you can give yeah. of this, we will figure out okay. what the priority then is to, to use that amount of money for. Great. I just, yeah, I just want to speak. We're all on the same page. Because I obviously, this is something, well, for me personally, I would, I, you know, I, I strongly support the, the proposal. I just, I can't envision our ability to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. so. Right. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, See somewhere. Maybe this is that one. I mean, you can see there are quite a few stones. You know, again, I at this point we don't really know a price per stone, or we can figure out what we do. We might, you know, it's it's not clear what would be decided. I would say obviously we'd look at them all again and see which are the ones that really like that are really about to fall over or or disappear. Thank you. Has this work ever been done in these three cemeteries? Have graves been restored? I am, I do not know the answer to that question. Sarah, do, do you know? I do not believe so. If, if anything, I'd be surprised if they had been done by DPW years ago. 
and my recollection is that um, the historic uh, commission came to us once before for fencing around Bridge Street, and we did not fund that. Mm -hmm. Had, had, is that the only time that the, the, uh, the, the only time the commission? So that was the Ward Three Neighborhood Association, and then when that request wasn't funded, um, they went back to DPW and had some more detailed talks, and then the request for the master plan came as a result of, of that discussion. So no actual work has ever been funded, just the study. Okay. And we funded one study previously? Yes, and yes. DPW covered the other study. Okay. Where are the studies located? Do you know which website? Um, I think they're on the planning <coughs> website. Sarah, so are they? Because they, there there's they're a link on the front of the other. They're quite comprehensive. You can judge by the size of them. It's, uh, they're, they're really very um, thoroughly documented, researched, and again, a lot of public input into them. But I, I think they're on the I see them. Yes, I Yeah. The Preservation Master Plan, there's one for Bridge Street, and there's one that includes both West Farms and um, Park Street. That's the other plan. This is probably in the Master Plan, but is there a threshold or a year or an age at which point a gravestone becomes public responsibility to maintain rather than that of the family? Just because I happen to have a family yeah. issue with the gravestone that's you know not a hundred years old, but we have to spend some money to fix it. Right, right. I know it's a private um, cost I, at yeah. a certain point. Yeah, I don't know. I assume a lot of these families are still in their family. Yeah, and I don't know what the policies are in the cemeteries or what. Yeah, I don't know. Uh -huh. Follow up on that, but there's, there's been no attempt to identify other potential funders of this project through family members that have uh, relatives in there. No, at this point, not that I'm aware of. <clears throat> other questions for Barbara? Um, no, did, did you folks want to speak on this as well? Lori and I'm Yeah, sorry. I think so. Um, my, name, my name is Tom Goldscheider, and I'm here to speak in support of the city's request for funding to repair the Priority One stones. Um, specifically, I'm representing the David Ruggles Center in Florence, which really tells the story that's represented specifically in the Park Street Cemetery. Um, some of the slides here, uh, as, as you mentioned, there are prominent abolitionists and also the industrialists that founded Florence, and there's a lot of overlap in those two groups, also members of the utopian community that founded Florence, and also one of the slides shows uh, Florence was 10% African American until 1850, when they were forced to leave with the passage of the future of slave law. And a lot of members of that community are also represented in that cemetery. So it really it tells a, a remarkable story. And um, I have applied for a grant to bring school groups. Uh, last fall, we had 130 Amherst Middle School students go through the cemetery and identify the various figures. And then we went to their houses and uh, created projects around that. And some of the markers are in pretty rough shape, and it's kind of disrespectful to bring students there to, to look at these markers, to remember these people, and to see them broken in two, lying on the ground. So that's why we're supporting this. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll echo uh, some of what Tom said. Lori Sanders, I'm here representing uh, North Northampton. And, uh, um, among among the uh, points that were mentioned earlier is at Historic Northampton, given our proximity to Bridge Street Cemetery, among the conversations we're having is to put together an event where we would have a, sort of a, basically it's kind of a theater performance in Bridge Street Cemetery so it can come, come back to life. Um, and these, the walks that we organize or, or other groups, I mean, S Steve just ran one during uh, Martin Luther King Day, which I think attracted more than 100 people. 
So I think there's a there's an interest in history, certainly at Historic Northampton, with this series that we're running called Exploring Northampton. It, it fills within, sometimes often within 24 hours, this connection between landscape and, and local history is really strong. So in fact, uh, Bob Reckman, Martha, and I have been talking in relation to this um, particular project, which we support, is is to have just what was mentioned here. Uh, when the conservators come, that we have a demonstration. We're also uh, going to be in touch with a woman who actually carves gravestones today, so that people can begin to see sort of how it's done. And then the other piece that is uh, is a factor aside from gravity and acid rain and, and age and are getting knocked by a mower is uh, but there's actually a very rich uh, diversity of lichens in, in the Bridge Street Cemetery. And so thinking about you know, these sort of man-made landscapes that create a unique habitat for certain overlooked species, I think is a way that we can actually integrate. I mean, Sylvester Graham's grave is pretty neat when you look at the Crestos lichens in and of itself as <laughs> being an interesting gravesite. So there's there's lots of things that we can talk about, and and, uh, and I think it will only be enhanced by by showing that connection and our commitment to protecting these historic and as both at, at Park Street, and you, you certainly see it all the Bartlett family as well represented <coughs> in West Farms. They were a very important family in West Farms and also in Florence. And as you all know, the, the Bridge Street Cemetery at Historic Northampton basically are, uh, are some of our prime visitors from out of towners are here to see uh, coming for Jonathan Edwards, or they're here to see David Brainerd's uh, gravesite. And you'll see missionaries sometimes reading the diary of David Brainerd, be, you know, lying down on the ground next to Jerusha Edwards. Um, and so there's a lot of visitation that, that we see, and sometimes they you know, move, move through us. So I think there's lots, lots of levels at a community level, and also just kind of at a, at a broader level, thinking of, of the descendants and others who are coming in to. to, to walk in the footsteps of some of these uh, people who have lived or visited North County. So I hope you'll be able to support it as, as much as you can. Thank you, Lord. Um, I, I have to do this uh, because it's the only lichen joke I know. <laughs> uh, Alice Algae and Freddie Fungus took a lichen to each other, but their marriage is on the rocks. <laughs> but I thought they were cohabiting. <laughs> no, don't read too much into it. Um, any other questions for the uh, Gravestone Conservation Project? I was on uh, the ML King Walk, huh? and it was a wonderful two hours. And I had read a, I had read a lot and been in there before, but to, to actually go on a tour was just like um, expanded my mind a lot. So, and, and I love the fact that the fence is down, and I'm hoping there there might be a compromise position at least in the front by the road because it really enhances the beauty of the cemetery to not so have that there. Um, though I understand the concern of, of some of the neighbors, um, but yeah, I'm in I'm in full support, and we'll try and do what we can do. Okay, so moving right along to the historic preservation plan. Okay. Let me just, uh, I don't have a. Um, so, for the um, application for funding f uh, for Northampton Historic Preservation Plan, the the only visual aid I have is this. this Sorry, I want to mislead you. Yeah. Sorry. 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 This is my visual aid. It says in big letters, Historic Preservation Plan. And it's from 1992. And um, 
It's yes. Well I'm sorry? It's well preserved. It's well preserved. This is a copy of it. I think there is probably in the planning office. I don't think this is online anywhere, but in the planning office, there are um, uh, there is at least one copy of it. And it did identify some history of preservation, what, why things should be preserved, and um, uh, rec did, made some recommendations, some of which actually were um, completed. There's now um, an Elm Street Local Historic District. There's soon to be a Pomeroy Terrace Historic District as well. Um, also, um, the CPC ordered a grant not too long ago to the Northampton Historical Commission to update and expand the scope of the mass historic um, uh, inventory forms, often called Form Bs for buildings, and so we've updated those. They're online, have mo better pictures, a more more full narrative on quite, a f um, we added many more um, houses and um, buildings to that. But the, obviously being 20, well now, not 25, 26 years old, this plan is outdated, it's incomplete, and we really want to um, be able to hire a consultant um, to, um, to come up with another plan, which we hope will last us for at least the next 10 years. Um, again, this is because of the Historical Commission, we really want to become more proactive. When we have, we, and also I should say that one of the other things we did, which was not, was not recommended in that plan, but um, we shepherded a demolition review ordinance through city council, and this enables us to, um, if someone applies in the building commissioner to completely demolish a building, either built before 1900 or on a list that we voted on, um, and that city council approved, um, if that is, if somebody applies for demolition, we, they come before the historical mission and it provides us with an opportunity to have a conversation with that building owner um, if we feel that the building should be preferably preserved. We hold public hearings as part of this process and if we um, cannot come to agreement right then to prevent the demolition, we can impose up to a one year demolition review period and we have done that. Um, the, we are not alone in being communities that when this is done, it doesn't necessarily save buildings, but it does start conversations, and sometimes it does save building. We um, actually, this process saved building where the David Breckle Center is now located in Florence. Um, that was a building that was slated for demolition, and we, we helped the owner figure out a way to, to keep it and use it um, and adapt it. So that we want a comprehensive and professional plan so that we can identify prior and, and prioritize historic assets in the city that we should look out for and not just be surprised when somebody comes before us wanting to demolish or, signific or even significantly change them. Um, so a plan would include assessing current, current historical and historic and cultural resources, the current tools in place. We want to um, work also with the recommendations and of the Northampton Sustainability Plan and want our plan for historic preservation to become more of a part of that and any revisions. We were, we did, we were part of the Community Preservation Plan in, I'm sorry, in 2007, and we want to continue having historic preservation ideas and priorities included in sustainability planning for the city. Uh, let me see. We also want to make this plan available both to city officials and other departments and to the public so that we can get input from more from the public and achieve, we also want to achieve better working relationships with other preservation minded institutions in the city, including Historic Northampton, Forbes Library, David Ruggles Center, um, even Smith College Archives, Historic Deerfield, so that we can all be pooling our resources and ideas to preserve uh, this, preserve the resources in this area. And the budget of $30,000 in this application and the timeline, we're, we're saying it might take a year to a year and a half to complete this work, which obviously also involves a lot of research and public, public input and process. Um, it's based on experience of other communities. 
to create similar plans. So we feel confident that, that this is a, um, an accurate estimate of what this would cost. Um, so that's all I have to say formally. Again, I welcome your questions. How was the previous plan put together? Um, it was actually, the initial plan was done by an intern, um, and then it was reviewed and revised by the planning department and with input from the historical commission. But it was not a professionally um, created plan. I mean, the initial plan was not, was done by an, a, an intern. My interns do great work, <laughs> but I don't want to, I don't want to uh, dismiss what interns do, but um, it was, the initial work was done by an intern. It seems in to the city. draw on a lot on the mm -hmm. Massachusetts Historical Commission's reconnaissance or mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of pulling, pulling information from other places. Uh, Sarah, you indicated we had funded a study. Is that? Uh, was the so was the form B updating that Barbara yeah. had indicated? So that's a, a parcel by parcel assessment of historic structures. Okay. So right. some so of right. but, but it does enable us. Part of the, the reason why we initially why we wanted to start with the updating these four Bs, these historic inventory forms, is that. When you look at them, then you can see them located on maps of the city, and you can decide, oh, look at this. There's this cluster of historic buildings. Maybe this is a place to have another local historic district. And um, so and it, it just provides you with some data to put into a preservation plan and one, one thing to consider. Other questions? So I guess I'm concerned that what has changed since that plan was put together in the history of Northampton that requires a new plan. I, I guess I, of the four priorities or the four, I see this last one, outreach and advocacy, as a great place to spend effort and money. Mm -hmm. That seems to me like the number one thing that we can mm -hmm. affect is people's interest. And it's all here. I mean, it seems like we're sort of it's the water when we're swimming in this town. Mm -hmm. And it seems I mean the form Bs are incredibly. Uh, detail and it's just a lot documented. Um, and I, I guess I, I am totally in favor of some kind of master plan, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. and I think last time Historic Northampton came to us for a full application, I, I said as much about, you know, for that uh, application. Um, but I'm just worried about putting together a plan that's just going to be kind of a lot of stuff that's in other plans and, and then just repeating work that's out there already, I guess, is my concern. Well, I think, I think after 25 years, first of all, that just the, uh, what do we call it, the approaches towards historic preservation and assessing what needs to be done and what resources you have, that just the whole, the, um, the professional approach to it has really changed in 25 years, I would say. And it's, I think after 25 years, it's really important to, update a plan and update the approaches and the way of looking at things. And um, so I, I, I think you're not, you know, somebody isn't just going to rewrite this or, and, and also that one presumably did not have public input and I think we need to find what people, just as uh, the um, planning groups for the cemeteries wanted public input, what people felt were important um, I think we need to do that at this point. Um, I think we, it really will provide us with a much better tool to be able to be proactive and to, and to set priorities um, for, for what needs to be looked at, preserved, and, and how to do this. And again, how to reach out to the public. I think it means unless we know what we have and what we want to do, identify those priorities, it's really hard to do it. We've, I mean, we've kind of struggled without a really good plan for a number of years. And we've really identified this as, a, as an important need for going forward in any kind of cogent and, and organized and methodical way. Again, not just to react to demolition um, applications, which is a lot of what we do. Right, well, so you're going to go around and buy historic properties. Right, right. that's what I think you do. 
Um, and things may may surface that we don't even know about. Some hidden gems, even landscapes that we didn't, we might not have thought of. And people say this is a really important area, you know, this bridge or this meadow, and it's a way of identifying things that were not on anybody's radar 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, as things have disappeared, because it's also a way of saying, well, what maybe we would certainly assess what we've lost and then try and address how not to continue along that route. Was that 19, sorry, you said 1992? 1992. Was that the plan that CPC used to incorporate into the CPC? Oh, well, it must have been, right? When we did the plan we had no a couple other. years ago? I don't think so. I think, no, I think we developed, we developed a new, new language and new standards. Yeah. Right? I, I, I think to do uh, that, yeah. Based on what other communities were doing and some discussions with the historical commission, the CPC came up with a new list of priorities. I don't know, no one, to my knowledge, has yeah. used that. But these are very the brief. It's very brief and more, more. Sorry, it's very brief, more of a skeleton. What's in the, um, the, uh, the, the community preservation plan recommendations, and also in the language that was put into the most recent sustainability plan. So th those are really just they're almost bullet points, and we really feel like we need a comprehensive plan. Uh, Barbara, is this a, uh, an all or nothing proposal? I and mean, we can't find half the plan. So is it 30000 or nothing? Well, it probably means that we have to either look elsewhere or because I, to me, this is, we're talking about a year and to a year and a half of somebody working. Obviously, I'm not exclusively on our plan, but I, I don't see it being done for less money. Um, because that seems pretty modest estimate for what this will cost. So, so it may, we probably postpone it. So we often, in the past, are partially funded projects. Right. This is not one of them. Is that correct? I mean, it's possible we could find funding somewhere else, but I don't know that we've identified anything at the moment. So we have not done that. What, what does a consultant bring to this that beyond what would be done in the Historical Commission? Generally. Well, for one thing, the historical commission, I mean, as most city commissions are, they're volunteers. Mm -hmm. And part of it is bringing time, attention that we can't do, and a knowledge of where resources are, where, um, where um, so resources, where research, um, they're more, they're more, they're more attuned to where to go and how to compile such a plan. It's really not in, in much better way than it, just members of the commission would know. I mean, the professional expertise really it makes a huge difference in the quality of the plan and the comprehensiveness of the plan. So no getting David Drake to do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, I, I see. Somebody like David Drake, somebody like Martha could do it. But, Again, um, yeah, it's, uh, there aren't many of us on the commission that could devote the time. Right, but, those, do, but you do yeah. have those people on the commission. I, I, mean, I understand the time aspect of it, I mean, it's huge. But I mean, yeah. this commission wrote a plan that mm -hmm. is quite, you could, you could mm -hmm. pull a lot of things down with that plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think anyone got paid. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just questioning. I, I'm mm -hmm. not, I'm not that's it against it, or anything. I'm just, I'm just turning it over. Other questions? So yeah, I have another question. So what is the commission's overall philosophy about outreach? And, and let me put it this way. For my mind, I'm relatively newcomer to Northampton within your five years. It seems like there is, it can feel like a very old place, mm -hmm. right? So is there any thought about how it could be, or is there a value or a priority in terms of representing re Northampton generationally in a new way? I mean, just, I'm not sure what, exactly what my question is. What is the, is the priority to sort of find more stuff that we need to not let anybody develop and put more stuff on a list? What's, what's the, no, I'm gonna say that what are the directions that the consultants right. can get? Because I think sometimes people misunderstand 
historic preservation isn't just old stuff. Um, because, for instance, as the city moves along, there are, I mean, let me just think of another example. So at Smith College, they recently, a couple years ago, they, they constantly are renovating their, their housing. And they renovated one that's on Elm Street, the existing house, or, you know, it's the modern house, it's and it's an international style, and it was built in the late 1950s, or early 60s. And again, that's not, I mean, now it's kind of old because it's like it qualifies. Six years, you know, it qualifies, but it, it's sort of a rolling, it's rolling. It's not just that we're interested in preserving 17th or 18th century houses. Mm -hmm. We want to try and preserve some of the fabric. It's not that we want everything to stay exactly like it is. That would be kind of silly. Mm -hmm. But we want to, in, I think unless you, you know, they say, well, this is going to sound very attractive. You know, if you don't know history, or history repeats itself, and you need to know what it is. You need to apprise yourself of what's there just in order to appreciate it and then go forward. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like, and, and part of it is, I think that a lot of, most, a lot of people would agree that the, the built environment and a lot of the landscape is what makes Northampton so appealing. It's why people come here. Mm -hmm. It's why they go. So that we do have to, if, I'm not saying we never develop any other open space, but you need, I think we need to, to um, inventory it and know what the history of it is before we can make the right, or make decisions, have discussions about what to do with certain things, mm -hmm. whether they be built environment or landscape. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I am a consultant, so I mm -hmm. do know that consultants have a knack for getting the answers that people are expecting to get. And so I just think it's incredibly important to come with a really articulated set of goals and values and, and really like putting some, maybe a, putting some real strict, not strict, particular sort of what makes this a plan for Northampton and not, mm -hmm. not Lennox, mm -hmm. not Litchfield, not wherever, you know, it's, uh, it seems to me that's, that's really important. And I think some of these priorities and, and and the, the approach and the scope will is are something that the commission can and will develop with a consultant, because a consultant would certainly ask us questions about well, what do you want this to be, and what should I include, and what don't I include, and what is it, what what is it you want to know. So it's 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 something that again a professional can help us to polish our ideas and 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 focus, help them focus by helping us to do the same. Um, Barbara, uh, Chris spoke about the issue of budgetary constraints, um, and maybe this is an unfair question to ask, but if if uh, we had to fund something, would you rather graves or a plan? Restoration of it. <laughs> what? Is yeah. it so you're asking me? Well, you know, I think that this is just my opinion. This is not. I'm not really. I can't speak for the historical commission. Um, I would say the graves can't wait. You know the gravestones. Um, you know again, we'd like to move forward with this plan, but the gravestones already exist. Um, so, but I don't know if the whole rest of the commission would agree with me. I, I just want to follow up on that. I, I do understand that it puts you in an awkward position to choose one kid over the other. Um, but that's exactly what we're going to do. Yeah. And um, I always feel better about that if I've gotten input from the people who are most directly impacted. So uh, we can do it in an uneducated manner or we can do it in an educated manner. Any other questions? Great. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome to stay, all three of you, for the rest of the meeting, or welcome to take off at this point while we move on. Well, I'll just say thanks for all you're doing. Yeah. And I know there's some decisions, and I, I appreciate your thoughtfulness and well, it's a good huge impact on Okay, Good night. So Thank you all. Stretch for a moment. Well, folks, please. And the
Does this mean with the chair that you'd be able to figure out how to get stuff up? No. Oh, well, if I go stand over there, <laughs> yes, that's fine. But for some reason, it won't talk to me. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving right along, next on the agenda is our small grant application, uh, of which we have three the state hospital signage, conservation area, uh, historical and ecological signage, and the uh, gun box uh, storage, firearm storage thing. Uh, so, three different small grants. Uh, as you may remember from the last few times, we have three choices. One is to fund them tonight, which we can do. Another is to not fund them at all. The third is to uh, kick them, kick it down the road, and put it into the general discussion in the next few weeks. So it's a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or a move along to a, another evening. Um, and we have no one to speak to them, nor were people required to come and speak to them. And that's the nature of the small grant. Try to make it as uh, as quick as possible. So let's see. In no particular order, uh, the way I think we've done this in the past is someone makes a motion on these, and then we discuss, and then we move on. So let's start with the state hospital, more park historic interpretive interpretive signage. Uh, I think that's how we started, right? Someone makes a motion, then we discuss, and it's, we're moving into actually right into the funding cycle right now. So is there a motion for that project? Sure. I moved it on the, which one, the signage? Yeah, the, the, signage. State, the uh, state hospital. Yeah. 3,000, right? At 3,000. Okay. Second. Second, okay, uh, and discussion on this. Um, I'm on the committee, um, so I've probably been talk a little bit about it. I don't know all the details of it because this hasn't been my assignment on the committee. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I can talk about it. Do you have questions? Or would you like me to say something? Um, I did, but I, uh, it's, it's all right. Please. I was just a little confused about how much money they have in hand to do how much of the project. I, I, uh, of the entire project. Sarah, maybe you just, can, can you reacquaint us? Fountain, or is it the rest of the park, or what is it? Where, can where we at? So the, the CPA funded the fountain restoration, yeah. and mm -hmm. then the remainder uh, of any funds left unspent from that project were going to be used for the Memorial Park. Nearly the entirety of the CPA funds will end up being used for the fountain, with very little left over for the park itself. Uh, so the, the Memorial Committee has been doing some fundraising. They sold some uh, artifacts from the state hospital at auction, and they're getting creative to look for sources for the rest of this. So they, they don't, while they have money for the product as a whole, they don't have money for the signage in particular at this point, except for a, a small award that was to provide sort of some seed money from uh, Mass Cultural Humanities. Mass Humanities. Mass Humanities. That allowed them to allow the higher the committee should say to hire um, a historian, Betty Sharp, who of course will glory at the sister of Northampton, uh, did the research on this and um, and he pulled images together and then also there's a graphic designer involved, which is how this prototype was produced that was the last page of the application. Um, and I thought my understanding is this is going to be the format that will be used um, for the uh, other signs. Um, and there's been one sign of these uh, finished, correct, and placed at the burial, burial ground. Um, which is top of the dog park. In the dog park, yes. So I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand what you're saying. You're saying that they have the funds in, in hand for the memorial park or, or their uh, some of them. So for initial phase of the park to at least get it looking like a park, uh, get it landscaped and get it created and have a place to install the fountains. Um, but the commission is hoping once that has been done that that will spark the need for some additional fundraising. It's hard to fund. It's difficult to fundraise something that you can't. What, 
part of my what I'm trying to figure out is you know, we're not talking about much money here. Is, it, is this the right time for the signs? Is it, are they going to be relating to something that somebody's going to go be going there, or are they just kind of going to be in a field somewhere? Yeah. Place? So the the fountain will be completed. It's almost complete now, but uh, the foundry needed some additional engineering details to actually get it complete. Um, so that we're working to get architects and engineers on board to make sure the fountain isn't going to fall over and that it's secure. And then uh, hopefully hop onto some DPW contracts to get work started at the park this spring. Uh, but I think you're asking where these signs are going. Yeah, how they relate, yes, and how they relate to the what part of yeah. the work. Okay. So my understanding is um, that these are actually going to be spread out through uh, uh, Village Hill. Um, uh, Tom Riddell, who is really the person who's writing this for our committee, the committee um, worked on a whole walking tour of Village Hill. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is, and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that these signs are going to be placed at certain kind of nodes on that walking tour. So they won't all be in the park. I think um, one or two may be in the park, but the others would be spread out um, to be used as part of this walking tour. Mm -hmm. Tom Riddell is the Smith professor, is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. I, I thought his, at one point his students or one of his classes did the signage uh, as, as uh, part of a class or something, is that not? They, they did some basic research, but it, um, they didn't do the graphic design portion of it, yeah. and they weren't able to complete it. So they sort of laid out a, a basic walking tour, but it, it needed a lot of and he no longer teaches the class, so he can't get the free labor. <laughs> Other questions or comments, concerns? So, how, uh, Martha, how many signs is it? I think it's a total of six. And, um, and this includes everything the graphic design, the research, the well, it's five more than the one that's already there. Right. It's five signs. It's five signs. Five more signs. Yeah. So it's mounting them and the cement and whatever. I mean, the maid, you know, there'll be a sign panel, and then they have to, yes, and then, you know, they have a, a, a support system, and they have to be mounted and installed. Um, now, one thing I will say is Tom has worked really hard on this um, for many, you know, a lot of years. Um, I'm sorry that he's not here tonight to talk about it, but he's put a lot of effort into this, um, you know, both with the students and working with the graphic designer and the historian and dealing with mass humanities grant application, which is very cumbersome. So. I'm still, though, confused, Mara, that says um, the primary historic project, the signage will be installed in a city park, but it's it's not going to be just in that memorial park. It's going to be. No, that's my understanding. It is not. It will not just be in that memorial park because there are not five signs going into the park. The park isn't large enough for that. Okay. My understanding is they will be installed around, um, around Village Hill. On private land. Yeah. Publicly accessible. Publicly accessible. Right. Yeah, and I think that's one reason why the exact location of where it finalized because some things have changed since Village Hill was initially developed and uh, some areas it may have seemed appropriate for signage uh, with the, the first plan that Mass Development put together may, may be changed slightly but they'll all be in publicly accessible Wait, So you're planning just approved the apartment building? Yes. So they, would, they couldn't know until that was approved? Yeah. Yeah. Other Comments? Questions? Are we ready to vote on this? Uh, let's see, so if we voted it down, um, we could then have a new motion to put a down vote back into the kitty. How does it, how do we do this? Because again, we have three choices, the up, the down, move it into the, 
Yeah. Well, if we want to move it, we just have to change the motion from a motion to fund at 3000 to move it out. Okay. Right? And we are voting on the motion to fund at 3000 We have to amend the motion. Are we ready to vote on this? Yeah. People good to go on this? All right, so the motion on the floor is to approve $3,000 for the State Hospital Memorial Park Historical Interpretive Signage. Uh, all of those in favor? All of those opposed? So it is unanimous. All right, now we're down to what? 126? So we can that in mind. Right, Sarah, we started with? <laughs> yes, it's, so it's 129,000. <laughs> and we may still get some funding back from the First Church of Spain last restoration, um, but they have one more invoice to submit. But that would be just a thousand or two, is that correct? Uh, they have 32,000 currently left in the account. Wow. So um, I think it's just wrapping up the project. I, I suspect we'll probably get at least 20,000, if not more, back. Ooh, that's, but we, and we will know that. Yeah. Whenever they finish, I I think they the only thing they have left to invoice for is actually getting the windows back up and installed. But all of the same and, last and both have, and both have been done. They have, yeah. So theoretically, we would know that before we before the end of the funding, for sure. Uh, okay, so let's move to the next one. Long's Ground signage, the conservation area, historical and ecological interpretive signage. Uh, is there a motion for this one? So we just did. Uh, no, it's this the, the second sign. This is the Sorry, second sign. Yeah. The title is Conservation Area Historic. Oh, right, yeah. Got it? Yeah. So, is there a motion for twenty-nine hundred in funding for this? Yeah, I'll move it. I'll move it. Twenty-nine hundred dollars. Is there a second? A second. second. Okay, discussion? Uh, have these been designed? Does anybody know? Have you seen a Pacific Anthro um, design done? And who's going to do that? And there hasn't. There is one, uh, there's a sign at the Kansas River in Norway. It will not be the same design as those signs. Okay. So but other than that. Uh, so we don't know what they are or where they would go. It's just a general. So how do we know this is the end of it? When it comes to Wayne, it's never the end. I would say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's never the end. It's really cool. <laughs> I, would, I would also say, given the history of funding, things that Wayne comes to us for, this is exactly the kind of thing I wish would come with more of. So it actually puts into active use a lot of the lands that, that this commission funds, that lets people know about them. You can come to us for three thousand dollars, whatever. I almost said too bad. I I was uh, thinking on somewhat similar lines of, of uh, the communication aspect of it and letting people know that it's there and telling them something about it and helping them see it with more understanding, different, fresh eyes. Um, it's, it's small, it's small money, and I think you can make it. Work. So, um, I, I, yeah, it is. I agree that it's small money. I am, I am concerned that. Um, how am I going to put this? I would like to see something very concrete about how much of this, what this buys me, and how much more of it I'm going to be paying for in the future. And. Um, the presentation as a small grant doesn't compel me. In fact, it makes me a little bit queasy. Because? Well, um, because I would like to know, I, 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 I strongly believe that a comprehensive sort of presentation of, of the city's resources is, is where we ought to go. And I don't know how this gets me there. So you feel like it's being pieced on piecemeal, kind of? Conceivably. 
Well, although, you know, I hope we see more of these. If, if we were to approve this one, great, now we've got seven signs, seven spaces marked out, seven areas where the public drives by and says, oh, I might want to stop. There's a sign there. There's something of interest there. That's a space that I might want to go into. And if we actually put more money into open space, we should see seven more the year after and seven more the year after. I, I, I mean, and I And the other way to do it would be to say, well, when you're going to come to us for an open space proposition, simultaneously put into that budget a request for signs. I think that would make me more comfortable, yeah. Then we should let him know that, but in the meantime, we've funded lots of open space, and you know, part of, I'm happy that we funded so much open space, but I don't think that there's a lot of knowledge about the amount of open space we funded or how to, how to get out there. I think there's a, yeah, I, no, I, and, I and, and we've talked about that. I right? agree with both, of, I agree exactly with both the points you just made. I'm mm -hmm. just not sure that this mm -hmm. takes me in that direction in a way that I that I, I'm happy about with the, hence the deep side. So I, I suspect that at the end of it I'm gonna vote for this, but yeah. I'm 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 yeah. I was gonna say I think there's a structural issue why that doesn't happen, which is when they ask for money to buy the land. Right. There's no trail it, necessarily, there's not really public right. access, so and eventually there is and I don't, I don't know what the process of getting from that point to the to there being access, but I kind of wish, why isn't there a list of, even if there was like, here's 20 places, places we might put a sign, you know, are they gonna put them all like, you know, in like on Brown Hill Road or something? I don't know. <laughs> you know like, I, I'd like them to be spread out, sort of, you know, give mm -hmm. you know, to different places. And I also don't think that the kinds of signs where you're gonna drive past and see them, I think they're gonna be trailheads or at a, at a promontory where you, like the one at Village Hill, I would, or yeah. I would imagine that these are the same type of signs. Yeah, not street signs. I mean, no, I think you're but you know, I keep driving by, for instance, that that space. I'm waiting for the Lead Civic Association to get all the work done on that space that we funded two cycles ago, I think. And I can see the 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 kiosk from the road, nothing on it. I'm waiting for something to put on it so I can pull over and, right. and which, read it. Which and, one is this? Um, Right there, so the hand no. line there. Oh, yeah, because uh, yeah, they've got right. the structure up and everything. The kiosk right. is there, but there's right. nothing yeah. in it. Right. And that was sort of what I, you yeah. know, you're right. I wish we had more detail about what was going in here, but that was what I was envisioning, that we would be having some types of kiosks at some of, the, at some of these spaces to, you know, I think about the trail that's just opposite um, the reservoir where people swim. Uh, Museum Beach. There's a trail there. Oh, I know where it goes. Rockets, I know where it goes. Yeah, yeah right, I've right, explored right. it a million times. And there's an amazing trail system back there. There needs to be a sign there. There needs to be some information. Well, that describes most of the trails in North Hampton, I think. I agree, and I wish that we could. I bet if we didn't vote on this tonight, I have a strong suspicion that we would come to us with a list, a list by yeah, the next meeting. I, and <laughs> uh, exactly where you get, and what would be on those signs, and how you would draw I bet he. We could change I, that. I'm a planner. <laughs> Well, I, I, so I have a question too, just in terms of, um, you know, what's the overall plan for doing wayfinding in the city? Is there an overall plan? Right. And is it all gonna, are these all going to be kind of be done in a vacuum right. so that you've got this little ditzy thing over here and another pile of ditzy mm -hmm. things over here and then the sun's up in Hospital Hill? And um, I mean, not that I think that we need to be that organized, ordered and structured, because that can also come across as being kind of anal and like you're living in a, a fabricated community. But I think some thought needs to be given to that. And I don't know, Sarah, I'm looking at you because I have no idea about this. I don't know whether the city has given any thought to that. There is a, there's a wayfinding committee, actually. And are you um, working with Mark Fangerman? Do you know? On that? I, don't, I don't know his name. I'm not. He's, he's, a, sign, he's a designer. Um, yeah, there, I mean, there's a professional. Yes, yeah, so that's what we're on that. But it, I think it's, it's limited to sort of larger scale mm -hmm. wayfinding and doesn't get to this level of parcel by parcel. Yeah, so it just, I mean, I would just like to sort of float that idea with Wayne. I, I would think that you would have thought of this just because I know how he thinks and it seems like something you would. Right, something like trail, like is there going to be a template where there's always going to be a trail map that's to yeah. scale, right. topography, right. just in general. Like they yeah. have them at Fitzgerald Lake, but right. that's broad. But that's big, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's so not big. part but, of the city. And you're right, I mean, Fitzgerald yeah. Lake, you have broad book up in Leeds, the Leeds Civic Association has right. done the work to blaze the trails and put out some maps. And there's a website that has some maps, not all maps. But these are, these signs would not be trailhead signs. No, no, these are historic. These are historic signs. Right. Like the, 
Into yeah, their interpretive signs. Right. Yeah. But they do draw people to our spaces. So that's the idea of an interpretive sign. Draw people to the space. Well, like the lead mines that we talked about. Right. Yeah. right. Like when you get there, there's a sign saying, here's what you're looking at. It's not yes. so obvious. But you get there. So, yeah. so if we change the motion to move it into our larger pile, we would get one here. We'll always ask, and ask for when you come. Yep. You clap three times. <laughs> there is a motion on the floor, though. Yeah. To fully fund this, and we could vote it down and then have a new motion to move it. And will we table the motion? Is that a thing? Yeah. Um, Not real. We could also vote it and then put into the letter some requests for details about what signs we're getting there. Other comments? Um, my only, I mean, I think this is a, a great idea. My, I don't know if it's a concern or just a thought, when we started these small grant applications, it was to try to get um, community groups coming in, these small uh, you know, groups who, who just needed a couple hundred dollars to do something, not the, not the city. This was not what this was envisioned to be. Mm. But it, it's fine that, it, that it's in. It was just not, I think, the intent of the small grant uh, idea mm. was to do outreach to, to, to small groups. Um, I mean, theoretically, Wayne can just do this with our, with our, with the conservation fund, correct? True. Yeah. I mean, it mm -hmm. doesn't need us to, 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 to do this. I was going to say when I when I go down Bird Pitts Road now, there's a sign out in the woods that says Bird Spa Greenway. Um, where did that come from? In terms of funding, was that something that we we put in that, or is that yeah. out of the conservation fund? Yeah. I mean, I I feel it's great that. It's like, hey, that's not just a patch of woods. That's that's right. a designated greenway. Mm -hmm. That's a start. Yeah. So Wayne programs those signs into the acquisition cost for every property. Okay. Uh, but I think with this one, he was sort of looking backward, even to things that long predated the CPA, like Mary Brown's Dinkle, for example, and thinking that maybe it would be nice to have some interpretive signage in those areas as well. Chris. Uh, I was just going to say that um, I wasn't around when the small grant mechanism was, was designed, so I found your piece of information to be really helpful mm -hmm. and uh, makes me even less enthusiastic about supporting this at this moment. Yeah. And I feel really strongly about knowing how this fits into the overall small fund, what the city is up to um, in terms of white mining. I think one of the last time. I don't know if it was last time or two times before when Wayne was here for questions and answers. We kind of talked a little bit about there's all this property that the city owns or helps people conserve or whatever. There's no like one stop shop website where you can see it all. It's very confusing. Mm -hmm. We don't know who sure. sees these things, you know? It's really confusing what, what's out there as public land or publicly accessible land. So and, and, and this is a tiny piece of that overall, mm -hmm. like, like we talked about with historic. Commission, you know, yeah. outreach, communication, yeah. strategy. Yeah. You know, if you do all this and nobody knows it's there, it's useless. Kind of. right. So if we want to influence that, we don't vote this down, then we need to move it to the other pile. Because otherwise, we don't have the conversation with Wayne. Uh, Linda, any? No, I'm fine having, having the conversation. I think I've, I mean I'm supportive of, of funding this, but I think funding it in the context of that conversation would be yeah. even better. Mm -hmm. So we do have a, who, who made the motion? No. I did. Julia. Oh, Linda. Thank you. Do you want to reframe the motion? Or is that within our, our prerogative to do that? Like we'll withdraw it and put another one in, or do we vote on this? How do we do this? Can we can just amend it. What is we have a motion to fund it for 2900 Can we amend it to consider funding it for 2900 in the large grants round? Okay, is that acceptable? That's fine. Okay, so the motion has been amended to bump it down the road into the large grants round. Is there a second on that amended motion? Second. And a discussion on that? 
Uh, all those in favor? So, so, Sarah, can you get Wayne to speak to this? Sure. Maybe next week, is that? Uh, it'll, yeah, it'll have to be next week. It'll have to be next okay. Wednesday. Remember we're meeting next Wednesday. May, uh, and if for some reason he absolutely can't make it, I'll ask him to put together. Was this the same? Additional information. Was this the same exact application that came to the historical commission? Because there's a letter from David Drake here from January. Um, for which application? This this application on the back. There's this letter from this, David Drake saying that the letter. historical commission unanimously. So, so I'm wondering if there was more information, and there seems to be some mentioning of specific sites. But uh, the historic commission included those because those are ones that are on they, their radar screen as uh, being historically important. But uh, they, didn't, they, they didn't know which ones might be included in that. So they just would work together. with the historical commission to develop a mm -hmm. list of, so, so I don't think it should be the CPC design. So specifically, what would we like Wayne to respond to? What, what can he do to help us move toward a decision? Where are the sites? How, what, how, what is this process for deciding where the sites are? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the sites going to look like? How do they fit into the overall plan for wayfinding in the city of Northampton? Assuming that there is one. Oh, uh, there's a plan for one. Um, I would ask that. It's not like you just go on Wikipedia and say, what was the history of this site? What you say about the history of the site it can be a very politically charged oh, case. You know, there's a lot in there. And who's deciding that? Uh, that's why I'm saying the historical commission should have a pretty big role in this, I would imagine. It's a great book out there, Lies Our Monuments Tell Us. Sure. Uh, as this is a digression, but forgive me, has anyone been to uh, the Green River swimming pool up in Greenfield where the Green River is? There are two monuments there, and it's about the Turner's uh, Falls Massacre during King Philip's War. The mm -hmm. bottom one is 1903. Um, this is where heroic uh, Holyoke was killed, fighting the heathens and you know with uh, you know the God, you know with God fearing troops. And the other uh, sign up above is from I think 1998 or something. Um, this is where Holyoke fell following the massacre of 3,000 women and children up in up in Turner's. The same event. <laughs> and it's like, what? It's, and they kept them both to their, to their credit. You got the rock down below, you got the sign above. The same event, two completely different interpretations. Right. One her own uh, battle, another massacre. Right, and there was, there was yeah. a massacre here. Yeah. He fell for too. It's, it's, so, rare, but it's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Sarah, you got our what the yes. marching orders for Wayne? Yeah, Sarah, Sarah, you know, in maybe a meeting I did not attend, but I do not recall Sarah talking about this at the historical commission at all. But again, maybe something I wasn't present for. So, and it was November or December, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we move this into our fourth um, proposal to look at findings. So last but not least is the um, Called the gun, the gun thing, the uh, historic arms collection storage. Okay, brought to us by Historic Northampton, and this is uh, a little shy of the 3,000, 2,976. Is there a motion for this one? I would move that we uh, fund this. For 2,976 dollars. 2,976 dollars. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, discussion? I just wanted to mention, I thought that Marie did a really nice job on this proposal. Yeah. This is sort of like a model of how it should be prepared for the record. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little ironic that this is application is coming in right now to protect weapons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> Well, it's for safety. She did it's for putting on your lock and key. So these are under lock and key, not to be, or occasionally to be shown to the public. Is that, is that right? Not in, not in what we would fund. What we're funding is simply a storage, storage unit right. to preserve and to protect. Is that? 
Theoretically brings our total down now to 123,000 uh, with the unknown of how much will be returned to us by First Church, if any, for the, in the terms of the restoration of the project. But right now we're going with 123,000 to guide us in our discussion beginning next week when we uh, have the public input for these four projects uh, and then can, I think that's probably going to go fairly quickly and then move our, uh, and begin our decision uh, In the meantime, um, as, uh, as noted, uh, the community preservation, we're moving on to the next agenda, the community preservation coalition in Boston is a sort of member supported organization uh, that uh, we have contributed or paid dues to in the past. Uh, they have billed us now for our coalition dues notice, uh, $4,350. Um, Sarah passed out a two or three page handout, I think at the beginning of this meeting, looking at what their expenses are. Um, and it is up to us to uh, vote whether uh, we're not required to contribute or, or submit our membership, uh, we are requested to do so. Uh, and I'd ask Sarah just to maybe come up with a list of pros and cons, and she's the one that is most in touch with Stuart and the powers that be and most informed about their value to us. Uh, so, Sarah, I know you wanted to take a look at the financial report or point us in that direction. Well, I. So they, they did this on a, a sliding scale based on <laughs> revenue. So we are in the million to the two and a quarter million category. Uh, there are three funding categories above us. Um, only Boston is in the top 15 million and above, it'd be 20,000. Um, I, 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 I mean, I don't, I went to a CPA in the city forum in the fall and all of the staff and board members that I talked to there didn't work. I guess they we weren't really thrilled with what the coalition was doing for cities at this point. So what are they doing for cities? I don't, I don't know, really. Um, well, they do add, they, forgive me if I'm wrong, sir, they do advocate on our behalf to the, mm -hmm. to the House and Senate okay. to assure that um, there's a funding mechanism in place that they try to get give us more money, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. So they're part of that budgetary process. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 if, if you look at their, 
you know, financial report, I mean, it, it's a half a million dollar uh, expenditures on their behalf. It's a little unclear to me what that's funding. But Chris, was that an itch? Or was that, that was an itch. <laughs> they also seem to monitor what's going on for that information. Yeah. Right? They respond to a lot of requests for information to our sister towns and cities and, and, uh, and uh, committees. And they may be working with towns that do not have CPA passed. Correct. Correct. So I, so I do have a question. Um, Sarah, have you I mean, how do you utilize them? Have you ever gone to them with a request for info or any of that kind of stuff? Uh, I have a few times, and I've not found their responses to be useful in any way. In those, and again, I, 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 <laughs> not, to, not, to put you on, not to put you on the spot, but in situations such as that, have you been able to find the information elsewhere? Uh, yeah, I either... I, I either call other CPA communities on my own or end up turning to the Department of Revenue or our own city solicitor. Thank you. What kind of questions would they do? And we used to ask them legal questions, but their response was consistently, you need to ask your city solicitor, so we stopped mm -hmm. those. Uh, so I, I now I, I have more general sorts of inquiries. Like, just out of curiosity, I asked them if there was any community who would change the required set-asides. And they didn't respond to anything, anything helpful. So I don't, I don't think we utilized it at all. Were they involved in that acting? So they, they submitted an amicus curiae brief. Yeah, it didn't work. But I, I think that's it. Would you like a really kick ass laptop? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sarah, all I hear uh, the tone of your voice and the, uh, the substance of what you're saying is really very negative. I, I just, it just seems like a lot of money for, at the very least, things that we're not seeing. I mean, I don't know to what extent their lobbying activities are really benefited for Hampton, and it may be tremendously, I don't know. Uh, but direct benefit that we're actually seeing, I don't think there's any. Is there any other example of a city organization that lobbies on its own behalf? So, uh, Mass Association of Conservation Commissions, I guess, but you don't, it's, it, that's a different type of This is a, set up. this is a private, not private, it's a non-profit, but it's outside yeah. of government. It's not, it's not a government. It's a non-governmental non-profit. Yeah. So, the uh, Preservation Mass, an organization like that, it's a activist mm -hmm. organization for the preservation community that's a non-profit. It's d different from the Mass Historical Commission. They don't. They don't invoice. They're we a don't relationship like, organization, so but it's yeah. not. Yeah, I don't. I mean, there are individuals that belong, and I don't even know. Our historical commission doesn't pay dues to it, though. Uh, they probably could, but I don't think. No, they do not. Not that I know of. No. Yeah. We could. You probably could. Yeah. They'll take your. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could we pay a nominal fee? I mean, do we have to pay this? We. We could. I mean, no, I mean, it's a, we it's want. a nonprofit. I mean, we don't. We're not obligated to pay it in any way. Um, David Drake said that he would, a few years ago, that he would feel guilty reaping the benefits of whatever lobbying they're doing and not contributing to it. I think the CPC has basically used that as a basis for continuing to pay it. And we have paid every year yeah. for for forever since we've been around. Sarah, do you have colleagues in other cities or communities um, that? I'm just curious whether you know there are other cities that opt out. I don't. I should ask the coalition that. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know if anyone has has neglected to pay the dues. I'm not sure. Yeah. But as 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 the uh, CPCs have expanded to other towns like Boston, more money is coming in. Is that correct? To to them. To or, them. Yeah. I mean, are they? But we're, we're paying the same amount. They're just getting more money to do. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of a, it's a an interesting point. scenario because every additional community that signs on to the CPA, we get slightly less. Right, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. so and not just slightly less. I mean, yeah, I mean, now with Boston, 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 we substantially yeah. 
enormous thing. Well, it's a highly regressive fee scale. If they had, if Boston has 50 times our CBA revenue, but they pay four times our dues, or five times our dues, yeah. that seems very odd. Well, I don't know. I move, I, you know, I will move that we don't pay. I'll second. Okay, further, so move to not, not pay our dues at all. Can you use that money to spend on projects? Great. So, uh, so this is in the administrative account currently, and we'll go back to the projects fund at the end, at right. the end of the fiscal year. So that's what we said when they asked us. Is there any? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I am a little concerned um, because the funding does vary. There, 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 there has been the issue of if there's a budget surplus, trying to make sure that that CPC funds um, if there's a funded uh, item out of that surplus. And I'm, I'm a little hesitant to just let go of that and have no coordinated effort on behalf of um, on behalf of this funding, uh, the, the whole effort to change the funding mechanism and the advocacy behind that. And if that had been successful, we'd be, be on a much firmer footing. So I'm wondering if if there is anybody you can find out about the value of their lobbying. And if they're, if they're lousy at it and it doesn't make any difference, then... I, I'm, not, I'm not really cool. sure how we get a verifiable answer to that. I don't know who mm -hmm. to ask. I mean, we, other than going to senators and representatives, I, I don't know who to talk to. Chris? Sir, have we as a town ever been asked by this organization to take part in a coordinated effort to move any particular legislation in Beacon Hill? Uh, they asked for general support uh, in the last legislative session. I have got emails, or I've received emails saying call. Yeah, I have to. Call your rep about from, from them. From them. Because I mean, what I was thinking before you before you um, commented was, you know, how is what they're doing any better than a letter from the mayor directly to the yeah, Department of Revenue, you know, state representatives, blah blah blah, at at the time that is appropriate to do so? Um, are they more effective than we are? And to me, you know, given given my experience granted a different level of government, um, but, but, but the people I work for always found it to be more effective to hear from individual constituencies than, than lobby groups, um, unless they are really, really good lobby groups. Yeah, part, part of what I saw them doing though was trying to coordinate. Right, and when you said coordinate, when you said coordinate, that was, that was the, the basis of where I was going with that, because I do agree with that, I mean, coordinated effort, you know, where they are the ones saying, look, you need to know about this and this is what you need to do, that, that to me does have some value. Other discussion? I, I, I just looked through my email for one. Uh, they, here's a form email. Our, our chance to build momentum on Beacon Road for an act to sustain community preservation revenue has arrived. Uh, and then they tell you that there's a hearing coming up and how you can submit written testimony. But that uh, that did not pass. When was that? Um, last year, last year, within the last about year. About a year ago. And I almost feel like as the funding goes down, the importance of the, of the lobbying for an alternative funding mechanism um, goes up. So it's, it almost seems all the more important to me now to be trying to do something about the, the funding structure because we're getting you know, chunk change at this point. Part of it is because of our the amount that we bonded, but still, you know, the, the amount that we have available is going down. And down. Well, I mean, the, as you get to 100, I mean, not that there is ever going to be 100 percent of towns with CPA, but theoretically, if you did, in a sense, you're just all giving money to the state so they can give it all back again. Mm -hmm. It's sort of why I have it. It's only it's it's more useful if the towns who actually care about CPA have it, and the towns who aren't that interested don't do it. Then you have this transfer of dollars. Mm -hmm. So 
sorry, I, mean, I don't know. So had, had they done a, it would be interesting to see if they, this, they would be the ones to do the analysis of like which towns are net winners and losers mm -hmm. in the game, you know? You know, do we pay more to the state? Does Northampton pay more to the state than we get back? I mean, I guess it's a really complicated question. No, so we, our, our local dollars stay local. So those, the well, I know, but the state money that we get is from our state taxes also. Uh, it's from registry of deeds receipts. Yeah, so our so our local money we get to keep. Um, that that's always ours, and then we get a a one time state distribution based on uh, registry of deeds uh, receipts. Like they they added an extra five dollars or something to every real estate transaction uh, and any other additional funds that are coming. But our our local um, so very little is actually. We got 17% back last year from the state. So we got to keep our money and then the state matched us 17%. 17% of, of what our local revenue was. Yes. And the Registry of Deeds revenue is not Northampton specific, it's no, statewide. No, state and then they divide it up correct on uh, portions of basis. Yeah. So it's not just our deed stuff. Right. Uh, uh, is, there all, and is there an alternative to pay them? Part of this. Sorry, how long have we been members of the committee? They started billing us as soon as we passed it. We've been paying four thousand and three hundred fifty or some figure around four thousand for how many years? They changed it slightly. I have to go back and see how much it used to be. So they they increased their they both increased their their dues yeah. and our local funding revenue went up. So we went into a different okay. category. Okay. But somehow or another, we've paid a few. We've paid probably a grant off to oh, yeah. them, right? Yeah. There's a couple because small we've been around for how many years? It's 15, something? 10. Uh, 10, is it? Sarah, have you ever gone to the statewide CPA conference, which is planning I don't think a they, return? I don't think they've had one. They had one in Northampton when I first started here eight years ago. And I don't believe they've had one since then. They had a few that were specifically geared towards communities who are looking to pass the CPA. Mm -hmm. Would who who made the motion not to fund? Chris, was that you? That was David. I, I enthusiastically seconded. <laughs> <laughs> um, would uh, would an alternative or amendment be that we funded a thousand dollars? or two, just so we still have a foot in the door. I, I'm feeling this guilt of, of not giving them anything. But I, but I, but it pisses me off to give them what they asked for. So it's like a, a knee jerk. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's annoying, but I just want to. But what are the dues do? There is no due date. <laughs> there is so what would we do? Will they send us the bill next year for double? <laughs> I, no, I think they probably send the same thing. We've never not paid it, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's just it, unless the lobbying has a it is really valuable. I, I don't think we're getting any services from them. It looks like they have three people, right? Two people. Well, there's an uh, associate director and a director. Well, they've got more than two people, so that's a $500,000 budget for God's sake. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out what they have. $90,000 in benefits, that's probably three people. Yeah, the Kuhn Fellow and the Ryan Fellow. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, they have Campaign. That's lobbying. Uh, that's, 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 that's oh, lobbying. so that would be like, like a lobbyist, like a cost of labor, like a, a consultant. You mean lobbying? No, that's lobbyist. Yes. They're not. They're it's not. Lobbyists. It's not a phrase of art. No. It's not. You know, it has a any campaign. specific meaning. I think that's what they they group it is. It could be it could be everything from stationery and postage up to 
um, lunches. Well, they may also have. A, they may also hire a professional lobbyist. Yeah, certain, they may. I mean, but, but aren't they the professional lobbyists? But, but fifty-two thousand. They may not be the professional but, lobbyists. I mean, I work with an organization that has that we do lobbying and we hire professional right. lobbyists. But fifty-two thousand doesn't get you a, a full-time professional. No, lobbyist. it doesn't. Right. As so I said, they may hire meeting, someone yeah. for yeah. specific causes. Sir, do you know how many communities are participating in this now? In, in the CPCPA? It's it up last time. Uh, it yeah. probably has something. See, this is the only thing that I find, like, I would go to their website for this type of question. You can also go to the Department of Department of Justice. CPI Trust Fund distributed over 162. But to go, oops, oh, sorry. To well, go the back reason I'm asking that is that, you know, we're being billed, um, they get roughly $400,000 from, I guess it's community members, isn't that it? What Correct, of which we are one. And we're, I don't know, it just seems like we're kind of paying a big percentage. You know, given that there are some very wealthy communities involved in this, um, it seems like a lot of money. So maybe. And the other thing that struck, strikes me is that only about only about 60,000 of this is work of money. The rest is overhead. They're not, they're yeah. They're not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're well, I guess theoretically some of those people are lobbyists too, I guess. No. Okay, so there is a motion on the floor to not fund. Uh, so at the end of last year, last fiscal year, there were 162. Yeah, so. But they're not all necessarily in the coalition. A lot of them might. Or some unknown percentage. Right now. That's why. So, yeah, maybe. You said 161? 162. Uh, it's increased. Okay. Are we uh, set to vote? And I, I will suggest there could be another motion after this. At uh, partial funding or um, asking, we could always ask for more justification than this one page handle that we've got mm -hmm. as well. That that could be helpful or so, some way to help us or help me be a more than informed but let's vote on, on the motion uh, to not fund the CPC uh, um, dues that we have been requesting. Ready to go? All those in favor of not funding uh, <laughs> at the $4,350 mark, uh, raise your hand. Okay, all those in favor of funding? And all those abstaining? Okay, so we have a, a, a five against, one for, one abstain. Okay, is there, would anyone like to make an alternative motion? Sure, I'd like to move to fund it. Are you happy with 1,000 or 2,000? What's your budget? I'd go with two, I think that's. At 2,000 dollars. Is there a second? Ooh. As chair, am I allowed to second? Is that? Yeah. Oh, then I'll second. Okay. So now we're down to funding at 2,000, which is a little less than half of our 4350. As a, I, don't, I still don't think that's a token amount. I think it's fairly significant if they're 130. We're funding at $2,000. Um, anyway, uh, is there a discussion on this? Funding at $2,000? Okay, so uh, the motion is to fund at $2,000. All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, all those abstaining? Oh, I'm nay. I'm sorry. Okay, let's start that again. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so the motion is to find the two thousand dollars. All those in favor? All those opposed? And abstaining? <laughs> that does not pass, correct? It does not. Does not pass. Okay. Three, three, three. Oh, are we done with this? I want a motion for a thousand. 
<laughs> this is like the bidding up. We're just <laughs> bidding up. Okay, so is there a second on that? I'll second that. Any discussion? I think that, you know, by giving them a, a small amount like that, it shows that we support the concept, um, but we'd like to see a little more um, well, substance. I think we ought to really monitor this yeah. the next six months to a year. I got it. This is really worth it. Yeah. I suspect if we send them a check for a thousand, we'll get some feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. I would hope so, but if not, well, if not, yeah, then you're like, fair enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it was a very good, very good issue to raise. Question. Yeah. I just feel like I don't quite have enough knowledge to cut it off at this point. I share your guilt, your guilt that you expressed. I kind of think like we ought to do something, but I'm not sure who these people really are. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. It seems like just too much money to me just to be an automatic payment. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah. Time. yeah. And what are they going to be doing for the next? Sarah, could we ask you and I'd be helpful to help write a letter and accompany this thousand dollars and get the tax to do it? Or if we don't fund them at all, some sort of letter stating our concerns and our wishes for more I don't know, transparency or some knowledge of you know so an understanding of value to us. Yes. Given yeah. given the type whether we vote in favor of this thousand or not, I think they're deserving of the letter of state. Some of, our, some of our concerns. All right, so motion on the floor now. The third motion is a thousand dollars. Coalition thanks to our abstainer. No. Uh, um, now advocating. Just the most. So all those in favor, a thousand dollars. Oh my that. goodness. There that we go. Really good. All that's right. good. And that's the sweet number we're looking for. Okay, sir, good for that, and you can draft something. Yes, I'm happy okay. to look at it. Uh, replacement laptop. So replacement laptop, it's not this laptop. Uh, this was purchased, I think, in, back in, 20, in 2012, and it's still going strong. Uh, but uh, John, who does all the financial stuff and solicits the annual reports from all our grantees, had a very old laptop. It was mine. Uh, when I first came to the city nine years ago, uh, and it was I think three years old then, and it, it stopped working. Like it just didn't it's it didn't really function at all anymore. Uh, uh, so like when when I initially put this on the agenda, it was oh we should get one really soon. Uh, but with all the snow cancellations, it didn't work at all, and we didn't even um, try and repurpose it. We just threw it away. It was that bad. Uh, so it was I think it was less than eight hundred. Oh, well, I was going to say, could you get one for $3,350? Yes, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's, get, let's get a kick out of that. I feel we could. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm unfortunately retroactively coming for your approval. What, for why, are we vote, why do we vote on this? I just, I don't want to spend your money. <laughs> but you spend our money on everything else. <laughs> no, no, not on the newspaper. Very small things like newspaper ads when we do them, but any unforeseen expense. We so always come to the committee. Did you already yeah. buy it? Did you already buy it? It's our... I move we purchase a laptop for staff. So are we contributing to a larger sum or? No, that was it. Um, so it's just for in So the, the city MIS department picked up some of it and we got a discount because there were some laptops ordered uh, all at the same time. Okay. So it, it seemed like two good deal, different stuff. And the other one just didn't work either. Okay. So is there a motion to approve, I think? I think. I'm Chris made that. Is there a second? Second. Oh, uh, discussion? All those in favor? Okay, opposed? All right. Uh, a little. Uh, the amount that we voted on, though, I'm a little unclear. 600. Oh, I'd, I'd have to get the exact amount because we we just authorized the city MIS department to order it, but I, I'm confident it's less than it. Okay, uh, so site visits. Sorry, just want to add to this. I, they say that they're doing all this social media and they're on Facebook and Twitter. As far as I can tell, they don't have a Facebook or Twitter account. That's for, or at least they can't find it. on, you gotta look around. You, yeah, 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 if you have to like know where to find it, you gotta I know, look I, I saw that too. Well, when they first started, I remember way back when, they had a website where they were uh, logging on 
all the projects that were funded. Well, they do have yeah, that. They they could. Could. even not, that, yeah. they're just um, they're just reformatting the Department of Revenue website. So um, if you go to um, MassGIS, you can get all of that data yeah. on a map anyway. Oh. So they're just putting it in a different format. Okay. So those are the required reports mm -hmm. that Northampton and every other CPA I mean, is required to submit but to the But they're, they're not up to date. Yeah, I mean, if you go through it, like I looked at the 2017, the, the art stuff. Also, the idea that the Attorney General will answer change. all kinds of questions for you, too, like on the state level. I mean, they have people sitting in the and doing this. And they're closet on Beacon Street. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, so no, no, the, no, the, the state has employees doing it. I mean, sort of the appeal I mean, years ago, of asking the coalition a question was that you didn't have to get DOR involved because sometimes you don't want to know DOR's response right away. Mm -hmm. um, but now that they've just increasingly seem to refer me to other sources, so I don't ask them questions anymore. Is there a motion on the floor to withdraw the thousand dollars? Okay, um, so in terms of scheduling site visits, which is the next item on the agenda, we really only have two, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, which would be the gravestones, visiting gravestones, and back to the Academy of Music, which we have visited before, and the proposal I believe is identical. Is it changed at all? It's changed a little bit. Okay, a little bit. and I'm sure. It's, not, um, it's basically the same stuff. It's the same, it's the same, the same seven or eight requests minus minus some insulation for the front door yeah. but okay, everything so else is oh um, exactly. and, and any any other alteration they've increased the dollar amount okay. but let me just add to that because i wanted to ask that they came before the historical commission when you were six so was that last week yes last, week. last month um and they mentioned to us they are taking out this is what I, i'm assuming that deborah's going to present this yes she said anything to you she about this yeah. okay so they are taking a couple things out of it, specifically the bathroom work. And Tom, Douglas, the architect, is going to do the drawings for the downstairs bathroom for Bono. Mm, nice. Uh, do people, uh, seeing as a lot of us went to, uh, to visit last round, do we want to schedule another time? I'm sure, speaking, not able to speak for Deborah, but I'm sure she'd be delighted to have anyone who would want to come. Martha, did you go? You? She did. So Most of us were, were there. Yeah. Yeah. Do we feel the need to go back to the academy? Is the question. I do not. I do not. Okay. Does anyone feel the need to do that? Okay. Uh, so what about um, asking Barbara or whoever for a tour of some of the gravestones? Would that be appropriate? Would people be interested in that? I would, but I, would it be sufficient with everybody else to just select one one location? Rather than the three sometimes? Yeah. I would, I would think so. I think that would be fine as long as you take it with a grain of salt that, that's just representative of all three cemeteries. Well, we'd let them choose the one. It could even be that among the committee we have a self-directed tour. We may have someone who knows something about it. No, that's true. We may we may have someone who knows something. Yeah. I I know I'm not supposed to say anything, but I I just mentioned that the um the, the, the preservation plans are online and all of the gravestone assessment is included in that. And there are photographs of and a de detailed description of every stone that is needed to be conserved. Oh really? And a priority set. So if you could just look at it online. I'm just hmm. yep, it's it's yucky out right now. It's not gonna be any nicer before next it's week. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've been to, I've been to at least two of them, so I don't have a need myself to go there. Do, does anyone um, feel the need to schedule a visit? I suppose we do that on our own, too, or just walk through. Right, it's over. Right. Yeah. So I'm hearing that we don't need to schedule any site visits, so. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? I, I have a process question for um, Sarah, probably. Um, I've been, for professional reasons, I had to take this uh, class on public procurement law. And That's fun. It's, been, it's actually very, <laughs> one thing, and so I, it does not cover CPA, but you know, obviously there's a lot of, of connections. Um, one thing that came up in my research was that um, in terms of CPA funding for um, land 
that we have to have an assessment done? I mean, uh, an appraisal? For the, the land program itself? For buying pieces of property. Uh, it, the need for an appraisal is only triggered under certain circumstances. Uh, if you're buying it for less than assessed value, it's not necessary unless okay. you're going after certain state grant funds. Right. Um, under assessed value, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, We're not allowed to give more than the assessed value for it. No. So, so uh, Wayne takes care of all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows all of the incidents. And the I just can't remember seeing assessed values. I'm, it's probably in some of the applications I just don't remember seeing. In I'm not sure if he includes it. Maybe it's just a good thing to include for a CYA. Yeah, for us. Yeah, very good. Good go to so that's it. Any other business? Okay, so we're back here next week. Um, we'll see you. Then, oh, motion to adjourn? Yeah, yeah.